Hey, Marina. Hi. Okay, so welcome to tonight's team call. Um, the way that we have been doing our team calls is now on Zoom, and we all get to see each other's smiling faces. And it also gives us a way to be able to kind of get feedback and talk back and forth instead of it just being the um, presenter that's able to talk. So um, I'll be, you know, sharing my what I've got to share with you guys tonight, and then I may, you know, specifically you know, ask somebody for an example or, you know, if it's happened to them or whatever. So just be on the lookout. I may be calling on you. All right. So, um, but to get things started, I'm going to do a screen share. So let me pull up my, um, my presentation. Is it showing? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. All right, so we are talking about getting back into the game, and um, it is baseball season, so I thought it was appropriate. Um, and, you know, getting back in the game can be so many things. It can be in your fitness, in your business, in your motivation, or, you know, your why, or whatever it is, it can apply in so many different ways, but the basic principles on how to do it, it's pretty much the same. But before we dive in, we've got some recognition to give to some awesome people that are doing amazing things with their business. So we're going to start off by giving a huge high five to our life-changing rock stars, um, these are our people that are um, in the 500 Club. Well, we've got our top PV earner, Caitlin Morris, who rocked it out at 758 PV last week. So that's amazing. And each one of these numbers really represents people that are out there and, you know, changing lives by connecting people with products that are going to help them with their goals. So, you know, Caitlin Morris has 758. I have no idea, um, you know, if that's made up of challenge packs or Shakeology or Ultimate Resets or whatever it is. It just means that she was able to get that many people connected with the right program or product for them. And that's awesome. That means that that person is going to be on track to change their life. So, awesome job, Caitlin Morris. That's amazing. At our 500 Club, we've got Tanya, Michelle, Diane, Caitlin, and Sandy. And then we've got our 300 Club, we've got Chelsea, Alicia, Scarlett, Michelle, and Diana. So great job, guys. And our top recruiter, Jenny Borgo, That is amazing. And she was also given a huge shout out on the national wake up call. So it's always amazing to hear our own family members being announced on the wake up call. It gives us that proud feeling and like, hey, I know that girl. She's she's doing amazing things with her business. Our fit opera singer. Um, so congratulations, Jenny. That is so awesome. And I know each one of those people are getting plugged into our family. And it's so cool to see your team continue to grow and prosper. Uh, we also have a, our other top recruiters for this week. We've got Stella, who's added three coaches. Robin, who's added two new coaches. Keisha Fitzgerald with two. Myself with two. Uh, Estefania with two, Erica Falick at two, and Alicia Piper at two. So just so you know, um, if you want to see your name on the top recruiter slide, you've got to sign at least two coaches in the seven-day period. So that's how you get your name up there. There's a lot of other coaches in our network that have signed coaches, just, you know, not more than two. Okay, two weeks left for Success Club. Now, May and June are both big months for Success Club, and you know a lot of us are wanting to hit SC10 this month so that we can start our qualifications for, to earn the Success Club party for Summit. But a lot of us have also made goals to be Success Club All-Stars, and um, you know that's a huge goal and a huge achievement and something that not a lot of people in the coaching network have done. So, um, you know, you still have two weeks left. Today's the 18th, so there's plenty of time to lock in those points. There's plenty of time to be 
following up and making new contacts and talking to new people. So just don't get defeated. It's totally doable. Now, so far for SC10 locked in, we've got Jenny, Robin, and myself locked in at Success Club 10. And then we've got locked in at Success Club 5, Jason, Emily, Chelsea, Michelle, Stella, Caitlin, Michelle, Tanya, Kristen, and Allison. So you guys have all gotten your points on the board and have qualified for one or the other. There's a bunch of you guys that have points on the board and you're so close. So um, just keep on inviting. Okay. So now we're going to talk about, you know, the content of our call, which is going to be getting off track. So mostly, you know, this is going to be in regards to your business. Um, and what made me think about it is because this is something that actually happened to me recently. And, um, you know, I was kind of going through some personal struggles and I was still hitting certain goals in my business. Like I was still getting success club. I still, you know, was an elite coach and all of this other stuff, but there was just things that were not in sync. And, um, you know, I couldn't figure out what was wrong and how to fix it. So this is just kind of some things that helped me personally. And I just wanted to share that with you guys because I know that a lot of people, they start off, you know, especially sometimes we've got new coaches that start off with a bang and they have like, you know, a great warm market and, you know, they get a lot of people at once that want to get started and then, you know, something happens where they fall off track. Or maybe you're somebody that's been consistently getting Success Club 5, you know, adding one to two coaches a month, and then all of a sudden life got in the way, and then you got busy, and each body got put on the back burner, and then you're like, all right, how do I even get started again? I don't even know. I haven't gotten points in months. Um, you know, so it can fall into a lot of different categories. These are some of my favorite quotes. Um, you know, that kind of have to do with that. Fall seven times, get up eight. I know that's one that John and I always talk about a lot. Um, I can't see the other one. Great works are performed by strength, but are, my screen is cut off. Can you, can you move yours? Great works are performed not by strength, but by perseverance. And it's never too late to be what you might have been. Okay, so step one, if you find yourself in this position, be honest with yourself, speak up and tell somebody, don't just sit there and let, and just go, you know, go through the motions and let your goals fall through your fingertips. Now, what I mean by that is, um, you know, if you have a success partner or you have a weekly call set up with your upline sponsor, and you're kind of talking, you know, doing the, you know, the regular, hey, how are you? Oh, I'm good. How are you? Good. How's your week been? Great. Thanks for asking. Like, use that time to speak up and say, I'm having trouble. I don't know. I'm, I'm not getting my workouts done. I don't feel, I just don't feel in it. My head's not in the game. I haven't connected with new people. I haven't invited people in weeks. You know, those, that is your opportunity to speak up and tell somebody what the problem is or just how you're feeling. And it starts with being honest with yourself. And that's, that's where it came down to for me. Like I had to really be honest with myself and I had, um, like my coach is Scotty Hobbs and, you know, we don't talk every week pretty much. Um, we just talk if, you know, I have an idea I want to run by him or if I am having an issue. And, um, you know, so I had to tell him. And sometimes, you know, if you, you know, if you are in a certain place and you feel like you shouldn't be having these struggles anymore, or you feel like, you know, you should be beyond this or something like that, it's hard to be honest and just admit, hey, this is where I'm at and I need help. But it's okay to do that. And that's why we're such an awesome family and we have so many amazing people that would be there to, you know, pick you up and to give you a pep talk or whatever it is that you need. Step two, take action. Do something. Do anything. 
Um, there's this one quote that Mike and I, we say all the time. Um, what we, oh, it's from National Lampoon's um, Christmas Vacation. And uh, the, it's kind of in the beginning. And the, the main boss guy is like in his big corporate office. And um, Clark is like wanting to tell him about his new like invention, whatever. And he's like, get me somebody and get me somebody while I'm waiting. But like, I don't even know, that's not even relevant to this, but it just made me think of it. Um, <laughs> but sometimes just taking action and just doing something, getting yourself off the couch or, um, you know, a lot of times when we're talking to people with, about their fitness goals, they're telling you that they're not motivated. They know they need to exercise, but they just can't have, they, just, they don't have the energy. And um, a lot of times I tell those people, just get up, walk around your house, just do something. And the same thing applies in your business. I don't care if you haven't posted on social media in two weeks. I don't care if, you know, your blog has been crickets for a month. You haven't posted a YouTube video when you used to post YouTube videos consistently three to five times a week. I don't care about any of that. You just have to make that decision to say, I am going to do something today. And this is just me. I don't know if this is, you know, happened to everybody else, but normally I find that when I am off track in my business, it usually filters through into my fitness as well. So if I am not being consistent in my fitness program, then I'm usually not being consistent in other areas of my life. So a lot of times a great start to get back on track is going to be recommitting to your fitness program. It's an easy way to get back into the swing of things. And it's a great start because that's obviously one of the vital behaviors with Beachbody. So, um, you know, if you are doing 21 day fix and you posted about it two months ago and you're still doing 21 day fix, it's probably time to recommit and start over, have a new day one, and start from there. Okay, forget about waiting to be motivated. Find the passion again. Um, how many times have you just kind of been like, I just need to find motivation? How many times have you like, looked on Pinterest or Instagram and you're like, you know, you're on your phone and you're, you're like scrolling through and you're like, oh, it's six o'clock in the morning and I need to find something that's going to motivate me to want to do my workout. What, once in a while that works, like maybe there will be like some cool quote or whatever that's going to give you that push. But for the most part, if you just sit around and wait to be motivated to do something, you're not going to get anything done. You're not going to meet your goals. So you need to go back to that place where you were, where you did have the passion, where you were excited about this business, where you were excited to talk to people, and you were excited to do your workouts and share about them. So if you think about where you are right now and, you know, the friends that you have right now, the influences that are in your life right now, people at work, people that you speak to like in your extracurricular activities, family. Think about those influences in your sphere versus where you were when you were super passionate and excited and driven and kind of see where the difference is. Were you doing like a different kind of personal development at the time that you were more passionate? Were you doing a different fitness program? There's actually times in my business where my motivation was way down and I was doing all the, the right things, but I kind of figured it out to be that it was just, I wasn't into the fitness program I was doing. I was doing it because I felt like I should, like I felt like, well, you know, it's the latest and greatest program. So I'm going to do it, but it wasn't, it wasn't my soulmate program and it just wasn't giving me that same passion and that, same drive as when I was doing, you know, like P90X3 and I was posting a, you know, a workout of the day and I was, you know, posting tips about the nutrition. Like it just, I was more inspired when I was doing that program. So sometimes you have to think about that just because, um, you know, I don't know, just because 21 day fix is the latest and greatest and giving people great results. It doesn't mean that it's your thing. 
So it has to be something that's driving you and motivating you. So you can't do a program just because it's what Beachbody said is, says it's the latest or greatest or just because it's giving other people results. You have to do something that drives and fuels your passion. And then I wrote find a passion partner and we've talked so many so much about this and there's so many different names between a success partner an accountability partner and this is a new word I came across today and I really liked it a passion partner um, <laughs> Mike says I'm his passion partner um, but really just you know somebody that can be there for you someone that can help fuel you to you know keep moving forward so that you remember why you're doing this why you started why you want to keep going even when you you know you're tired you're unmotivated you're out of it you know you need that person that's going to reel you back in okay attach a purpose to your success this is something I learned from one of my corporate reps that I worked with um, named Kobe Mitchell. He's not at Beachbody anymore, but he's actually the very first corporate representative that I got to work with when I became a multi-star diamond. And he used to drive me crazy sometimes because he, I had goals and he had suggested goals <laughs> that I should have. And they weren't always the same thing. And he would want me to, you know, have goals for, you know, being 10 star, or 15 star. And I was more focused on other parts of my business at that time. And part of it was for me, a limited belief of not thinking that I could achieve those things. But the, an exercise that he had me do was thinking about, for example, the 10 star bonus, he had me give a purpose to that bonus. So let's just say for easy math, the 10 star bonus is 15,000. So if you were to get that for a full year, that would be 15 times four, so 60,000. So he had me attach a purpose to that money. What would I, like if it's just money, then it's, it's easy to let it go. It's easy to be like, well, whatever. I didn't get lucky this time. Like the lotto, you know, it's not like you really put a whole lot of heart into it. If you're playing the lotto, cause it doesn't have a lot of meaning. It's just a shot in the dark. But if you attach a purpose to the outcome of hitting certain goals in your business, like the 60,000, I could visualize exactly what I would do with that. I can visualize, you know, paying off debt with that money and I can visualize how that would make our family feel to not have the burden of these debts that we carry. Um, and I could know how that would change our life and how that would, you know, change our financial future by taking that aspect away. And so when he had me do that exercise, it really made me a lot more committed to the goals that I was creating for myself because I was giving them a purpose more than just a goal written on a piece of paper. Like it actually kind of takes on a life, you know, it has, it has a soul, it has a purpose, it has a destination, it has an end game of what's going to happen with that. So, you know, sometimes if it's just a goal that, like if it's a goal that doesn't have an, an outcome, like, oh, I just, you know, I just want to be diamond. Well, okay, then what and why? If there is no why, if there is nothing attached to it, then it's easy to put it on the back burner. It's easy to give up on it. It's easy to not continue to fight for it because who cares one way or the other if it doesn't have a purpose. So I hope that made sense. Um, okay, Marie Forleo, she's one of my super favorite people to follow. If you're in my PS page, I post a lot of her videos. <clears throat> she's not a beach body coach or anything. 
she's a, I guess you would call her like a life coach. Um, she's a business motivation and she does a lot of videos. She has a great web website. She does a new video every week on Tuesday, Q and A Tuesday. And um, I just, I really love her. And so I was looking at her website for just some inspiration for this call. And I saw this quote, losers wait for motivation, winners get stuff done. You guys know I don't curse very often. Um, so I had to edit that. But it's just so true. And that's like what I was saying on the previous slide. You can sit around and wait to be motivated and wait to be inspired. You know, and uh, while you're sitting and waiting, there's a million other people that are out there going and doing exactly what it is that you want to do and doing exactly what it is that you want to be at or where you want to be. You know, if you're wanting to, like John and I we were just talking about marathons and running and whatever. And uh, I haven't even started training for my 10K, but, uh, <laughs> um, but you know, as I sit here and wait for motivation to start, how many people have already started and they're already like able to run a mile without stopping. And I'm sitting here just like, Oh, you know, I'll get the motivation soon. And they're going to show up to Disney and they're going to have a 10 times better experience than me because they've trained, they prepared and they're ready. But I'm just sitting here waiting for motivation. So will we both still go to the event? Yes. Are we both registered to go? Yes. Will we both still get the medal? Yes. But that person is going to have the ability to set a new, you know, PR. Is that the right thing um, for themselves? And, you know, they can make that day, you know, a memory maker in their life and in their family. So that's just the difference between waiting and just going and doing it. Okay. Here is your action plan. Tell somebody about it. This is, you know, if you have fallen off track, tell somebody about it, your sponsor, your BFF, your success or passion partner. You know, have one of those come clean meetings where you're like, you know what, I know at the beginning of the year, I said I was gonna be a success called all-star, totally fallen off. I haven't even wanted to check my back office because I don't even want to see that big box in the middle of the screen where it shows you your success club points. So I don't even log into my office because I don't want to look at it, you know, or whatever it is. And a lot of times when you have gotten into a slump or you've fallen off track, then you just avoid it. You avoid like being confronted with it. You don't want to think about it. And, um, so if you just kind of have that conversation, it's easier. You're, it's like, okay, it's off my chest. We can move on now. So whether you have that with your upline coach or whoever it is that you speak to on a regular basis, hold on, I need a drink. This is the action plan. Um, okay, so start doing something now, like right now, right after this call. Do anything. Set yourself back up for success with small little things you can do to, give, to build back up your confidence. Recommit to your fitness and attach a meaningful purpose for your, to your success more than a why, a plan for your why. All right. Okay, so who has, who would like to share if they've ever kind of been in this spot and what you did? Jen, I think, I think me and you have talked several times the last week. I've done it before. Mm -hmm. And it's, I guess mine got, Started just after having a bad month and then training for all these races that I've run and just kind of pushing the business off to the side. And like you said, it was like there for a week or so. I was like, I'm not logging in that back office. I don't want to see a zero next to my name. Yep. 
So what did you do? I just did reevaluate things and remembered why in the heck I started this in the first place and what my purpose was in life and figured out exactly where I need to make the course correction and got back on it. Awesome. Um, Rachel, I know you've been there. Are you on? I see her name, but I don't see her face. Uh, oh. Did you see someone post in the chat below? Oh, a chat. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. I was in a slump and I got in touch with you. Oh, and it's helped me to regain my motivation and push uh, towards my business goals. Now today I committed to Summit. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome, great. Oh. Oh, and Rachel says she's at SC4. Boom. Okay. Marina, what about you? Uh, um, yes, I've fallen completely off during finals for the mm -hmm. Masters. I put like tons of heart in myself to do everything and then I kind of just let everything slide and then I realized how kind of gross I felt like by not working out that mm -hmm. I decided to just start over just completely clean slate and just start over with the program and then continue each day. So did you find that like starting back over on your program kind of gave you more motivation to want to do the business side too? Um, yeah, it definitely has because I've seen great results with the programs. Mm -hmm. that by myself getting involved with the programs again, it's kind of like, okay, now I can start posting to social media again. And that's how I got a lot of my friends and family involved. And yeah. To get, you know, whether into the programs or see how Cool. Um, Heather, you're kind of a semi-new coach, so have you experienced you this yet? Or? Um, last couple weeks, I've like really um, been in a slump, and it was more, I think, just my general depression that kind of stopped me from doing the coaching part, but I still do my, like you said, it was more when you noticed your fitness, like your, your plan, not like fitting, like staying with that, but that's not what it happened for me. I still exercise. I still drink my Shakeology. I'm still doing my um, personal development. And actually, um, like Jenny Beauregard and I, we talk like, we kind of like hide in our personal development sometimes. And that's what I found myself doing. Like if anything's going wrong or I don't feel like doing something, like, oh, well, I just obviously need more personal development. So I'll just read and, and like, like shrink back into that instead of, like just going out and asking people stuff or talking to people. So mm -hmm. I found that when I'm not talking to people or I'm not adding new people and just starting conversations, like I know that's just like I have not pipeline now. So I'm like, I've not gotten any SE points yet this month. It's the first time since I've started, I haven't had at least two points since now. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, what did I do? <laughs> I know exactly what I did. I didn't do. You know, I didn't like talk to people. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what are you doing to fix it? So I've, um, I've got, like, I started talking to people again. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, you know, and saying hi again. And like what I did in the beginning to get my patients every day and just focusing on that again instead of overloading on PD. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, that's easy to do sometimes. And, um, but I used to like to always want to do trainings. Like I was always wanting to do these webinars and all these things. And I would keep myself so busy doing all of them. And I wouldn't actually ever do anything. 
So it's kind of like the same with personal development. It's like you just like lock yourself into that, but then you don't ever actually implement anything. Yeah. Um, all right, last one, David. Tell us. Um, as far as like a slump, I've definitely been in one, but not with my workouts, which has been interesting to me because I'm doing Max 30 and John will tell you that I was on the struggle bus for a long time doing asylum and uh, he kind of like motivated me through that and I eventually had to like call my limits on that and do 21 day fix and fix extreme and it's just been like a continual like joy in my life to do max 30 even though it, it kills me and I scream and I laugh out the pain <laughs> but it's not bad just because I hurt my back this week and I'm just like, ah, oh, left through the pain. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really hit a slump as far as like um, believing in what I'm putting out because I know what I'm taking in, you know, with my personal development and my program. But like, I've gone like radio silence on my blog, even my blog where I'm tracking my journey with um, opening up my own theater with a buddy of mine and writing a musical. His, his blog is like flying off the charts. He's got stuff to say every moment. And I'm just like, I don't. So like I'm, I'm pushing through that and wanting to start over with that. And that's actually helping me um, wanting to get back into that passion. Today I finally knocked out, Two of the songs for the musical uh, where I haven't written anything in months. So. Oh, good. That's awesome. Yeah. So it applies, like I said, it applies to like all areas. It's not like just beach body land, you know? So, and you know, the more that we can improve ourselves in all aspects, the better that we're able to help our, you know, our coaches, our teams, our challengers and those kind of things. So anyways, it is 930. So we're going to wrap up, but thank you guys so much for being on the call. And I'm going to upload this to YouTube so that uh, we can share with our teams and the others that weren't able to be on tonight. And we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.